Hello and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. Is atheism a religion? It has a specific worldview and even value system. What accounts for the spectacular loss of faith in much of the Western world? Has secularism captured much of Christianity's message without the organizational trappings and dogma? And are atheists accorded the same rights as people of faith? To Crosstalk Atheism and Religion, I'm joined by Jason Torpy in Washington. He is the president of the Military Association of Atheists and Freethinkers. In Quebec, we have Lawrence Tistel. He is the president of the Creation Science Association of Quebec. And in New York, we cross to Rob Taub. He is a writer and comedian. All right, gentlemen, Crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want, and I very much encourage it. Jason, is atheism a new religion for the West? Atheism simply means lacking a belief in a higher power. So if, a, so if that's what you're talking about, then of course not. It's a simple expression of one's, one's own personal beliefs, which is more a feeling than anything. If you're talking about something like humanism, which is a positive expression of seeing the world through the lens of science, having human flourishing as a highest value, understanding the ethics and you know, rational approach to the world that goes along with that and making your own meaning well, what's, in the one life that we have. What's the difference between the two? That's often what's called the a different, religion, you know? What's the difference between the two? Is there any meaningful difference? So the meaningful difference is that atheism is a simple word with a simple definition, a lack of belief. Not even necessarily something that rises to the level of denying all other religions, but simply a lack of belief in a higher power. And the same reason a Christian doesn't believe in Vishnu or Hindu or uh, Vishnu or uh, Allah, we don't believe in any of those, uh, in any of those other other deities. But if you actually Jason, uh, build a, build it, upon it, that uh, a dedicated belief in a higher power, you know, in a higher human flourishing, and you build build out from that a system of ethics and an approach to the world, then I think that. You know, that's equivalent to religion, even though it's fundamentally different in several ways. Okay, Lawrence, I noticed you already wanted to jump in. Go ahead. Yeah, atheism means, uh, it's Latin for without God or, or you're refusing the possibility of a theistic approach. Um, th th there are some logical problems with just addressing that. It's not just a denial or, or, or saying we, do, we doubt it. It's, it's saying there isn't a theistic uh, back, uh, backbone to creation or to whatever surrounds us in nature. And so it's more of a position. And uh, the problem with atheism I see is that it requires someone to know that anywhere in the whole universe there isn't a God, there isn't a, pro a, a theistic process. And that's impossible because our knowledge is so small in terms of the universe that we couldn't possibly pronounce ourselves as saying we know that nowhere in the whole universe there's no such thing as a theistic, there's no such thing as a God. Now, if, if Jason was to say he was agnostic and was saying, well, I just don't know if there is a God, then I would understand better. But atheism is a, uh, a position that it puts itself against a, a theistic position. It's the antithesis of a theistic position. Now, I must say this, I still believe it's a, it's a belief system because you, everybody has to believe one of two things. Either you believe in an eternal God or you believe in internal matter. You only have the two choices. And either way, you're looking at something so that's, eternal, that's, which is beyond uh, the realms of science. I jump it delves in into something that's belief. It's a point of the program. Jason, sure. go ahead. I, I don't know if you want to call it yeah, a belief so it's system. A false, I'm sorry, it's go a ahead, false Jason. Okay, let me go to, let, yeah, Jason wanted to reply. Let Jason reply. Go ahead, and then we'll go to Rob. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, Lawrence, Lawrence said specifically, you must believe in God or you must believe in a purely naturalistic world, and that's a false dichotomy. It's a logical fallacy. He also uh, uh, he also put forth that atheists have the position that we are holding that there is no God no matter what. I already said it's a lack of belief. If you approach the world in a, pro in a proper manner, the burden of proof is on the person making the positive assertion. The positive assertion is the extraordinary claim that there is a magical being in the sky that created the entire world. That is the one that has the burden of proof. You know, Lawrence and other religious people have to prove that to others. Otherwise, the only logical uh, position to have, the only intellectually, um, the only position of intellectual integrity, is to reserve, uh, accept, is to not accept a position that has not been proven. Okay, Rob, now go ahead. Please and jump that's in. That's the atheistic so position. 
Okay, well, first of all, when many people refer to religion, they refer to it as organized religion, and that's a big problem with atheism and, and, and why you can't refer to atheism as a religion, because there's no real organization to it. It's like having a meeting of anarchists. There's not really an anarchist <laughs> It does party happen, though. That does happen, Rob. It does happen. Anarchists and they don't want to vote on it. has, but, you know, they do, not very well. They don't want to vote on anything. And I... I think, I, I, I guess I might list myself as, as an atheist, but I, I like to think that hopefully there's some kind of higher power, but I don't want to look at it in, in the classical way of some, some godlike guy saying, you know, that Rob Tobbs driving down the Cross Bronx Expressway today is going to get in a car accident and break his arm. Uh, I, 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 I mean, that's, that's a real religious extremism, but I, I just think the big problem right now in, in our in this country specifically and in the world is w religion has always polarized us and, and separated us and torn us apart and caused wars. And it's too structured a belief system and too regimented. And I also think that religion is losing step in this country, especially because people are not motivated to follow religious leaders. They'd rather follow sports figures before <laughs> a religious leader. Lawrence, jump in. That's a very I, good I don't, point. I don't so agree with let's that. go to You're Lawrence. Let's oh, go sure. to Lawrence first. Go sure. ahead. I mean, if we took, if, if we, <laughs> uh, that can't be true. If you take a, a, a look at all the um, uh, Gallup polls that are done over the last 20 years, over 50% of the American and Canadian, I'm Canadian, so I refer to that, but the American population also uh, believe in a young earth that's under 10,000 years. Another 35% believe that at least God created man. So it's 85% of the population is theist. Yeah, the, the, I'm sorry, I know that 15% of the population is controlling the media uh, or perhaps the educational system, uh, but 85% of the population is theist in the U.S. and in uh, Canada. And certainly I, I, I don't see an atheistic uh, uh, president in the U.S. actually coming to power. They, they have to go for the religious vote because it's such a powerful vote in the U.S. It is less so in Canada, but such a powerful vote in the U.S. So I, I don't understand what Rob was saying. Um, I do know this, though. Well, that it's maybe not it, as powerful uh, Jason as you think, because that it if it was, the Republicans would have had more of an Jason impact. mentioned that it wasn't rational to believe in a, in a creator, but that it's the most rational thing in the world to believe in a, in a creator. If, if I have a computer yeah, in front I of think, me, no one is going to tell yeah, me I think that I the computer can vote okay, okay, all right, it Jason. It's, it's, to go go to J it's go to Jason. Go ahead. Fair time. Yeah, so the first thing we don't want to do is have another logical fallacy of appealing to the majority. No matter how many, how many people believe in a certain thing, that doesn't make it true or false. But I can recognize Rob's um, criticism of the humanist community, you know, the organized atheist community, the ones that, have, that live according to their values and have deeply held beliefs that they care very much about, that we build communities and families around. You know, not to have an advertisement, but Military Association of Atheists and Freethinkers, American Humanist Association, the International Humanist and Ethical Union, the American Ethical Union, the Society for Humanistic Judaism. These are all organized groups that have come together and are trying to build communities, communities of values to help people not only to know that how not only to know the facts and, and the values of humanism, but also to live communities in an atheistic lifestyle, even if they don't necessarily label themselves of humanism mm -hmm. or agree with every single thing, they can come together and say, we only under, you know, we understand the world through the lens of science. We care very much about humanity and the advancement of humanity. And we are going to build these organizations, not in a hierarchical, a dogmatic way, but in a loving, caring, and compassionate way. And those communities are out there. So when you go out and look, of the, look for those communities, you will find them if you, if you just look around for humanist communities and even atheist communities, meetup.com or Google or, or any of these um, modern technology that you, that you look around for. Rob, Both those, in Canada, the U.S., those, Australia, Afghanistan. If I go to Rob, those are noble ideas. What's wrong with them? You don't need religion to believe in that. I think most people would agree with what Jason had to say. Well, let me jump in on that. What I think is interesting is I was raised as a Jew. Uh, I'm not practicing. I was bar mitzvahed, and my grandfather was bar mitzvahed, but he came to the United States from Russia, and he had with him a talis and tefillin, and he pretty much, I don't want to say he renounced his Judaism, but he never really went to synagogue anymore. But he used to talk to me about the Bible, and he, he gave me an interesting comparison. He used to also read Grimm's fairy tales to me and stories that all had a moral lesson and some kind of parable. And he used to say, it, as long that that's what the Bible is like. It's it's telling you tales of morality. Doesn't mean they're true. And I, I think that the big problem, especially 
with Christianity more so is they tend to literalize everything. The do, one thing I do like about Judaism is it teaches Talmudically and it teaches through stories and parables and moral mm. lessons like that and seldom tells you you're going to be smote or that you have to pray to an actual existing deity, which is another reason why it's not a popular religion. I think one of the big ironies of Judaism, it's a very liberal religion if you're mm. born into it. The big difficulty is if you if you want to convert to Judaism, they make it nearly impossible. Whereas <laughs> if you want to convert to Christianity, it's like, okay, sign this, raise your hand and say, I'm a Christian, good, you're in. Okay. Lawrence, go ahead, jump in. Judaism, you've got to go to school for like 16 years, even, yeah, okay, if, well, we, even we, if you're lost. 90 years old. You know, they, they okay, make so it impossible for you. Okay, Lawrence, go ahead, jump in. <laughs> yes, yeah, somewhere in here we've lost your initial Please question, uh, which was whether <laughs> atheism is the new religion. Um, uh, and, and I think that, I don't, first of all, I don't think it's a new religion. Uh, and yes, I agree with Jason that humanism is perhaps the religious um, manifestation of atheism. Uh, but my point is that all humans as individuals are religious beings. They all believe in something. They can, their, their, their knowledge only goes so far. So they have to use a belief or a faith system somewhere. And where it concerns the origins of things, the origin of the universe, origin of themselves, or where we come from, what our reason for being is in the universe and where we're going, these are all religious questions that humans pose. I don't think dogs do. I don't think any other life form does. Um, my communication is limited with my dog, but he doesn't seem to think too abstractly. And so, I would, I would go that uh, yes, we are looking at an atheistic uh, religion. My dog I is must a say deep one thinker. thing though, uh, I would, I would, I would, I would keep away from uh, the idea that that religion is the, the the bane of all existence and the opium of the people, and it's it's, it's a problem everywhere. It, religion has its problems because people have their problems, uh, just as atheism has its problems. I mean, I mean, we, we can't say that uh, Stalin, Pol Pot, and Mao were Christian or religious in any way. They were communist atheists, and they killed more people than all the wars put together um, uh, up to that stage. So, so, and I'm not doing a competition. I'm not saying that anything bad is good because something bad is bad, or I'm, I'm just saying... How many people did the it's, Crusades it's the human and the heart Spanish All right, Rob, we're going to go back to you here. We're going to go to a short break, and after that short break, we'll continue our discussion on atheism and religion. Stay with RT. Welcome back to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. To remind you, we're talking about whether atheism is a religion. Okay, Rob, I'm going to go back to you. You were in the middle of a pearl of wisdom. Go right ahead. Well, I, I was saying that just because you're a, a despot uh, like Pol Pot or Stalin, do, it is, has nothing to do with religion. It's, it's more about political tyranny. There's political tyranny from the Ayatollah Khomeini, who was wildly religious. So you can't say that a godless country is going to produce morally, uh, you know, bad people. Uh, I, and, and I was also adding that when we're talking about wars and slaughter, the Crusades were pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, the, the Irish and the, the English seemed to be f fighting over religion for years. And then there was this thing called the Spanish Inquisition that wasn't very nice to my people. Another thing I want to point out about religion, organized religion, that I find flabbergasting to me is the intractability of religious groups. I mean, the Catholics wonder why <laughs> their popularity is waning. Uh, the Pope, <laughs> who, who left today, was still telling people in Africa not to wear condoms, harboring pedophiles, and putting together rules and, and, and regulations that are, I don't know if they're called regulations, but just ludicrous rules that date back hundreds of years that are just not in keeping with modern times. So of course they're going to lose followers. Okay, Lawrence, I think you should respond here because you're the yes. odd man out here. So Lawrence first. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I, I, well, actually, I agree with what was just said. Um, I'm not too fond of religion myself. It's usually as a, a used to manipulate or to control uh, groups. Um, I, I'm more into a relationship. If there is a living God, then I would believe it's possible to have a relationship with that God. And, and that's a very personal thing. Uh, it can be done in groups, but it's always a personal relationship. That's the whole evangelical Christian community thinks that way. Um, but I would, I would have to agree with what was said. I think religion is a bad thing. In fact, if we remember in terms of Christianity, it is the religious people that got Jesus crucified. Okay, Jason, very interesting point. Go right ahead. 
Well, let, I just want to uh, make okay, another point, point that, uh, that, that I find that here's, I was on a television show a couple of years ago, oh, a number of years ago, and President Bush was still president, and he was saying, God, the Lord told me to do something, and I found that really horrible and offensive. So that night on a particular show, I said, well, you know, God spoke to me the other day, <laughs> and he told me to stop eating green peppers. And the host was outraged at this. He was like, God would never tell you that. I'd be like, well, how do you believe President Bush was told by God <laughs> to go bomb somebody? Why, why can't God tell me to stop eating something that's uh, causing me severe gas? Uh, you know, and... and it's it's bizarre. We have this crazy belief system. Yeah, I that, think that's a that fundamental God difference. God is going to tell somebody there. in power to do something crazy, but He's not going to speak to the to the masses. Jason, jump in. To Go the ahead. little guys like me. Yeah, when I, I think I think one of the important things that we need to hit on this show when we talk about atheism versus religion, or even humanism versus traditional religious values, is one of the fundamental differences is this dogmatic adherence to belief. This celebration that because I believe something, that is inherently a good thing. You know, this insistence that I should take evidence, and if it fits what I look at, if it fits what I believe already, I should celebrate that. If it doesn't fit, I should call it the devil and put it aside. This rejection of reality in favor of preconceived notions is the most dangerous part of religion. That is something that is absolutely rejected no, by no, all no. non-theistic beliefs and practices, especially humanism. So it's very important to understand that as we look at religious people, as we do interfaith alliances and atheist religious alliances, if we try to make the world a better place, what we need to be on both sides of, of the equation most vigilant against is those pitfalls that are most dangerous. And that celebration of ignorance over evidence and celebration of myth over reality, that's something that we need to be most most concerned about, and it's one of the biggest differences between humanistic beliefs and practices and, and some of the you know, some of the traditional religious values and some of the expressions of those traditional beliefs. Lawrence, you wanted, you were disagreeing there. Go ahead. Please send me a transcript of what oh, you just said. That was wrong. very well Atheists done. are dogmatically... <laughs> Lawrence, sorry. go ahead. A atheists are dogmatic. Atheists are dogmatic about their position concerning evolution. Evolution is the basis of their religion. It's the, at least the evolutionary theory of hydrogen to human theory is the basis. They have to, because as I said before, you either believe in something supernatural or you believe in the eternal natural. And so they, they stick to the natural. Trouble is the evidence for evolution isn't there. He says, how many times did I hear Jason just say that anybody that doesn't think like him must be irrational, must be someone who, 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 who believes in myths and not in reality. Well, I'm sorry, I'm a scientist, a geneticist, and I don't, I don't believe in the theory of evolution because I don't see it happening. Frogs don't become princes in 150 years in any, 150 million years in my lab. I don't see it in the fossil record. I don't see any evidence for what the evolutionists are purporting, aside from microevolution. Large changes going from bacteria to human just aren't there. That's a belief system. So it, it's wrong to say that, they're, that well, they atheists are, there. are not dogmatic about something. They're definitely dogmatic about their position concerning so naturalism, ignorance. because Jason has been on this whole show. Okay, Jason, you want to reply to that? Please do. Let's know, because it was to Jason. I, I don't think he's been so dogmatic that, you at know, all. That is, that, it is well for ignorance. Um, so, you know, all, of all the things that we look at in the past, you can see, you know, we adjust our, every time we adjust our views in the, in the face of new evidence and new science and new scientific advances, we're called flip-floppers and we believe in nothing. Every time we recognize the mountain of evidence, you know, for example, for evolution, you can go to talkorigins.org. Um, that's just a nonprofit website that can answer any creation artist argument. Uh, because there, it's easy to answer. It's not that we reject the religious evidence. We put the one page of the Bible, that, that page from Genesis, we put that on one side of the scale, and we, then we take all of the evidence ever collected from science through history. And, you know, for me, I just think the evidence outweighs. Um, and it's very simple. You know, we see it in the courts. We see it in the court of public opinion. Uh, creation has put forward a list. Uh, one, of the, one of the institutes, they have a list of all of the scientists from any discipline that maybe support creationism. And then to respond to that organization called the National Center for Science Education put, put together the Steve Project. And they just, they only accept people with Steve, names of Steve or Esteban or <laughs> Stephanie, similar names like Steve, and only in disciplines that are actually related to geology and biology and evolution. And they have thousands of names with just a hundred or so on the creationist list. So, so to, to say that evolution Jason, is not supported, to, uh, that, is, that is something that only and right. exclusively comes from... Okay, Rob, this is not, oh, so that's a good point. So, so this is not an appeal to a majority. I always this is an appeal you, to I've... expert opinion and to evidence. Rob, jump in. And remember, the first list came from the creationist side. 
I find it really amusing that, that creationists find it hard to believe that dinosaurs walk the earth, but they think Moses held up a stick, turned it into a snake, and then parted the Red Sea. I, I, it's, it's, it's comical and really tragic in a way. And, and the religion also becomes, even with extreme atheists, like the political spectrum, the far left and the far right, they're so far apart, they come together and they meet in a circle. It's, it's like an atheist. I like Bill Maher, but I've seen him on there calling anybody who's religious a moron. That's not right. It's just like saying if you don't believe in God, you're, you're going to burn in hell. It's, it, you know, there has to be some middle ground. Uh, and I, look, I know people who are professed atheists, and they probably are, but they still attend a house of worship because they get some kind of comfort in it, or it's a social thing, yeah, or yeah. they enjoy a ritual. And I'm not going to condemn anybody as, uh, for, for what they think unless it's a real extremism, and then I'm, I'm going to be bothered by it, whether it's an extreme atheist or, or a religious fanatic. The, bo both of them bother me because they're both fanatics. Lawrence, go ahead, jump in. Is that all about tolerance then? That's what Jesus taught, being tolerant. But that doesn't mean we don't believe there's an absolute truth. And uh, certainly I disagree with some of the comments uh, and stereotyping that I just heard Rob do concerning creationists as a, I don't know anybody that qualifies under what he just described a creationist. I certainly don't. Um, but I am a scientist and I go with what I observe. Uh, and, and we can get off on that tangent, uh, but we're getting away from your question, which is, is atheism the new religion? And yes, I think there is a, a backlash. And basically, well, if, what I'm hearing well, if Jesus is, taught is a tolerance, a lot of people religion, miss that lesson. From the <laughs> That's a good so, point. So, yeah, of course. Uh, and so what, what I'm hearing is a lot of, a lot of people are having a backlash yep. to organized religion, yep. and I think that's healthy. Um, I, th I, th I mean, the thing is, is that someone who puts them up as a more puts themselves up as a moral standard, uh, as Christians are remote, or will do, uh, then set themselves up to, for a fall if they can't maintain that moral standard. And so, um, however, I like the fact that the Christianity does have a moral standard and has a moral yes or right, this is right or wrong. Whereas atheism, I don't see where a moral standard would come from. There's no general moral. Yeah, well, right I mean, or wrong. I think Where would right can, or wrong come from? You no, know, uh, but Lawrence, can't you be moral just an and not, can't you be moral and I be an atheist? To it earlier. Can you be moral and an, and an atheist at the same time? Yeah. Of course you can. Yes, I think yeah, so you too. Can. You can, but I think there's a reason for that. I think that uh, God, uh, that there is a God, and that He wrote His law in our hearts, and so we are born with an innate knowledge of what's right or wrong. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't predict that from an evolutionary position. Jason, what do you think? We're just an evolved that? animal. Uh, we don't put we don't put uh, dogs well, in prisons I mean, so if they bite someone. They don't know what's right or from wrong. Yeah, and that's and that's a good point. Dogs also can't fly to the moon. Dogs can't, you know, <laughs> develop develop legal systems and ethical no systems, social justice framework. Um, yeah, they, and they so the problem is is that religion the religion is the most. You, maybe. I, <laughs> Keep going, Jason. Yeah, yeah. So, so the understanding is um, religion is the most common expression of cultural relativism. What we have is from a religious framework, we say, I have my book and I have my interpretation of my book, and that, there, and that is absolute truth that others should adhere to. I mean, that's why we have thousands of different kinds of Christianity. The different thing that we do within you know, the atheist and humanist tradition is what we do is we try to really do the hard work of understanding what the right approach is in the right situation. We take social sciences, uh, medical sciences, nutritional sciences, um, political, political background and evidence, and we try to figure out what the best approach is that increases human flourishing. You know, that's the, that's the value that we approach. And for so example, let's take the burqa. So, so you're trying if to we create take the burqa a right or wrong. And, and the religious you're trying to create a truth or non-truth. That's a religion. That's the only option we have. It's better than just Jason. taking whatever's written in an old book. I mean, there's two approaches here. You can, you can pick what's written well, in the book. There's an old you joke. My, my take favorite, Mel Brooks. <laughs> I wish we had more time, no, Rob, because I love your jokes. World, but gentlemen, we've run out of time here. Many thanks today to my guests okay. in Washington, oh. New York, and in Quebec. And thanks to our viewers for watching us here, RT. See you next time, and remember, Crosstalk Rules.